How's it going summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides Wild Rift video. My name is Bord and in today's video we are going to talk about how you counter your counter. For this it's very important to understand that just because a champion is in theory good against another champion, it's not always the case that the opposing player is able to play the champion to its fullest extent. And with that, he won't be able to counter you in the first place. But let's go into the video to tackle more of those details. You love him and you hate him. Singed is a champion that not a lot of players like to see, be it on your team or the enemy team. But why so? Singed as a champion is very weak throughout the laning phase and can be shut down in nearly every lane without breaking a sweat. The champion itself just doesn't have the tools to acquire agency in lane and therefore gets beaten up by most enemies. However, there are ways to avoid getting stomped on this champion. The number one trick is to not leash for your jungler and actually be in lane from the very beginning. If there's something Singed can do, it's actually pushing the very first wave thanks to his first ability. If the enemy chooses to contest your push though, there is something you need to keep in mind. Don't retaliate with your own auto attacks, rather spread your poison inside the wave and get him to tank your minion wave. Your first ability won't aggro the enemy minions while the enemy champion hitting you is going to get destroyed by your own wave. Even better here is the fact that your poison is an area of effect spell that lingers for a brief moment and allows you to hit all the enemy minions at the same time. With all that in mind you can also get to level 2 faster and pull off the flip of the sentry with which the enemy champion gets thrown back into your vicious little helpers, also known as your minions. They really do hurt too much to be honest. Another little trick for Singe players is to not skill your second ability on level 3 but to put an additional point into your first ability. More damage, more happiness. Unless you need the goo of course. Other than that, Singe provides a better gank setup than most people expect. A flash flip puts everyone into the danger zone and opens up a lot of options for your jungler. However, we don't pick this champion with the purpose of winning lane in mind. We want to play the map and want to leave the laning phase as fast as possible. With that, we are unleashing ourselves from the shackles of weak laning and turn into a teamfight monstrosity. Don't forget that your first ability deals damage to any enemy that is touched by it. And taking into account how fast the runner Singe becomes, you'll find plenty of opportunities to get the entire enemy team poisoned. As a key takeaway, don't always look at your lane when it comes to playing your champion. Spot the openings and power your champion holds within in different segments throughout the game. Before we continue with today's video, make sure to check out our Discord in the description below. Regular giveaways and a lot of community events are part of our progress family, so all that's left is you becoming part as well. Next up comes our favorite duelist for the Baron lane, Fiora. And for now, we are here to talk about her greatest struggles, facing tanks. Even though one might assume that her true damage is surely of big help to dealing with those, it's actually not. The scaling on her passive in terms of damage is rather low, so there is not much coming from that department. Luckily for us though, there's another option which recently opened up thanks to the introduction of new items. Previously, when facing tanks such as a Garen or Malphite, we'd be in pain when it comes to situations in which we fight each other after the very early stages of the game. However, by buying Serida's Grudge as our second item, we can get rid of that super easily. Remember, Garen will always run away from you with 50 million movement speed while ignoring your third ability slow. But those days are over. With Serida's Grudge, we can permanently spam our lunch towards anyone and slow them indefinitely. How is anyone supposed to get away from you? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Even better though is that we are finally able to deal with tanks in a dominating fashion whereas before we'd just be victimized by their damage and tankiness. Go give it a shot, it's nuts. Alright guys, let's take a small break for our question of the day. What are your wishes for the update tomorrow regarding buffs and nerfs? Let us know in the comments down below. New video, new footage on Fizz and maybe some graves? He's becoming the absolute demon in the jungle role and is terrorizing the rift. But what stops him? In theory, anything that goes aggressive pre-level 5. So champions such as Graves can make it work. However, once the fish hits level 5, the tables will inevitably turn. For Graves to be successful, he has to deal with the fish early on or get ahead via cheese ganks, otherwise the fish is just going to outscale and murder Graves' team. So to avoid this from happening, you want a proper vision setup on both sides to give you the information you need in order to win. Here's also some useful information on what you can expect throughout the early game. Fizz can never contest the crap Graves is taking. He simply lacks the damage to fight the Graves on his own. Knowing this, Graves may alter his path to make sure that he collides with the Fizz or gets both scatter crabs for free. Don't forget guys, it turns out to be quite strong to have 8 stacks of your armor passive when you are in the river as Graves. So even though Fizz is dealing a lot of magic damage, he'll still suffer a lot due to the early stages of the game and the importance of auto attacks throughout that stage. 
give it a try and see how it goes from either side. Next up is a pig that has been kind of forgotten and nobody really knows why that happened. He's a sturdy cow and really likes going all in. However, whenever he's facing a certain guy with a fancy mustache, his options become a little bit more limited. In lane, he cannot just go in anymore and has to remain passive until the laning phase ends. And this is the most important thing to keep track of. Once you go into a Braum, you'll use all of your tools of repositioning and therefore will get stuck close to him. Pre-level 5, you'll just get stunned and most likely lose a big chunk of your HP while Braum holds up his shields and loves at your ADC, being unable to do anything. To avoid that, you want to either wait for options in lane in which the Braum is standing on top of the enemy carry so you can CC both at the same time before Braum can even put up a shield or don't play for lane. As a support, you aren't shackled to your lane and may freely move around the map and let me tell you this, a roaming Alistar is 50 times the threat compared to a Braum. Yes, he might be annoying, but he'll never be on the same level as an Alistar. For this, you want to be proactive and not fight a war you cannot win. Dive and tilt the other people on the map and accelerate the game. That's how you deal with a Braum as an Alistar. By the way, in the later stages of the game, especially teamfights, it also helps to knock Braum away so he cannot provide as much safety for his teammates. Last but not least comes Shavanna into an aggressive early game jungler such as Lee Sin. With the recent changes to Dragon and Herald, we can now force the enemy team to make a decision and they are forced to drop one or the other. Ideally, we'd want to get dragons on Shyvana, but that's not always a possibility. However, since we are presented an uncontested opportunity to acquire gold and experience, we can make do. But first, let's talk about the early game. Avoid confrontation at all costs. Ward your jungle entrances so you know what this dirty little cheeser Lee Sin is up to. Other than that, you want to farm up and get your ultimate ability, only then you are a true champion that is able to influence the map. Take what is given to you and soak up all the gold. If you get this done, you'll be 10 times the champion than Lee Sin could ever be. Given that your team isn't already stuck trying to surrender because you lost the first dragon. So to put more emphasis on this, guys, losing a dragon is literally meaningless in the context of solo queue. It does not change the outcome of the game. In reality, I personally trade Herald for Dragon any day of the week. Obviously, with Shy Vanna, it would be more optimal to get a dragon, but you get where I'm going with this. So don't force your jungler to play around your ideas and wishes and let him work his magic. There are many ways that lead to victory and no, coin flipping isn't a reliable way of getting there. Be smart and play around your own weaknesses and the enemy's strengths. And with that, we are at the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed the content, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to never miss anything while drift ever again. See you next time.